Welcome to Late Night. It's 12.37. We're live and very grateful to be here with you. Uh, I swear we were writing jokes today. And then, as everyone knows by now, today was a day filled with surreal and horrifying scenes of armed insurrection and attempt to destroy, through violent means, American democracy. It was a sequence of events unseen in the modern history of this nation. And the images should be seared into our collective consciousness for the rest of our lives. And so because of that, our show will be a little different tonight. In a few moments, we'll be talking with MSNBC's Nicole Wallace, as well as rapper and activist Killer Mike to break down what happened and what it means going forward. But first, I think it's important, as the first draft of history is being written, and as we're all processing what we witnessed today, to be as plain-spoken and clear-eyed as possible. What we saw today was a violent insurgency, an attempt to overthrow the legitimately elected government of the United States. And it was incited, directed, and encouraged by the President, Donald Trump, and more than a few members of the Republican Party and right-wing media. A violent mob of Trump supporters stormed the Capitol. They violently forced their way onto the Senate floor and into the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and climbed onto the side of the Capitol where they replaced an American flag with a Trump flag. They carried weapons in violation of the law, and they made it clear what they wanted. They broadcasted it to the world. Some shouted, Trump won the election from the Senate dais. Others waved Confederate flags, and their goal was clear, to disrupt and subvert the lawful counting of electoral votes and prevent Joe Biden from taking office as the legitimately elected president. And as we were all watching these stunning scenes of violence and sedition, of insurrection against our democracy, anxiously hoping for a restoration of calm and order, the President of the United States told the traitors and the mob, we love you, you're very special, I know how you feel. And he does. He knows how they feel because he spent four years telling them in great and odious detail how they should feel. So we can be shocked, but we can't be surprised. The president wanted this, he directed it, supported it, he incited it, and encouraged it. He told that same crowd just hours earlier that they should never concede, that they should show strength and fight. His personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, told the crowd they should have a trial by combat, and for years, the president and his band of seditious henchmen in the Republican Party and in the right-wing media ecosystem have fed their rabid base a steady diet of unhinged fantasies and conspiracy theories as a substitute for leadership and governance. The people who listen to Donald Trump, to the Republican Party, to Fox News, and all the rest, what they've been told for years, and what they were told again today, was that their country was being stolen from them, that shadowy groups and powerful forces were coming for them, that they should never accept defeat, that they should fight. For two months, they've been fed monstrous, inflammatory lies about the election, and now, here we are. Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, and the rest of the Sedition Caucus in the House and Senate goaded this on. They're responsible for this. They should wear this shame and disgrace for the rest of their lives. No one who aided and abetted today's actions should ever be allowed to serve in a democracy they so clearly detest. There must be consequences for stoking violence and sedition. Otherwise, we're gonna see it again. And as for Trump, the only way, the only way our democracy will survive this harrowing moment is if he is immediately removed from office by either the cabinet or the Congress and prosecuted anything less is tacit permission to continue to use his office and his influence after he leaves office to foment sedition and dismantle democracy. And if our government fails to act, they'll be assenting to the violent destruction of the democracy they claim to care so much about. And I think it's worth noting that while this is the first time most of us have witnessed anything like this in our lifetimes, our country has really only been a full democracy where everyone can vote for about 55 years. In fact, one of the many great shames of what occurred today is that it eclipsed a historic moment 
a shining glimmer of hope from last night in Georgia. There were black voters who went to the polls in unprecedented numbers to exercise a right that just 55 years ago they did not have. They elected the first black senator to represent the state and the first black Democrat to represent any southern state in the Senate. They also elected the Jewish son of an immigrant, and in doing so, also helped repudiate the violent, racist, authoritarianism of Trump and his movement, a movement that has never been embraced by a majority of Americans and which has been rejected by voters over and over again. We've seen violent insurrection in this country before. In 1898, a mob of white supremacist terrorists marched on City Hall in Wilmington, North Carolina, and staged a violent coup to overthrow the legitimately elected biracial local government. Multiracial, pluralistic democracy is fragile and precious, and it requires our vigilant stewardship and protection. And anyone not willing to forward that project with the fullness of their effort must be shamed and disgraced and removed from office. And that must start immediately with Donald Trump. We are gonna try our best tonight to process what happened. I promise, I promise if you come back tomorrow, we will have jokes and we're gonna be right back with Nicole Wallace.